Okay, so a slightly different video this time round. Um, using star tools, um, I'm taking an image that somebody posted on one of the Facebook um, astrophotography channels or groups. Um, and they asked if people could try and process their image just to see what was possible. Um, so I believe it's 23 light frames, 30 seconds each, um, an ISO 6400 and has been shot on a, a Nikon camera um, with a crop sensor, so equivalent to 600 mil um, focal lens. So I don't think there's any calibration and files in here, but I thought it'd be interesting just as a, you know, not, not as a, a challenge as such, but again, just, just interesting to see what I can do with somebody else's um, image. Um, you know, obviously this is a quick run through just to see what we can pull out from the data. Um, and hopefully this allows the person who supplied the image just to see a process that they could possibly go through themselves with star tools. So I'm just opening uh, the file first, um, per usual in Star Tools, um, and a lot of other um, uh, processing apps. The stacked image comes through quite dark. Um, so the first thing we're going to do in Star Tools is auto develop it, and this will highlight and show us exactly what uh, we're working with. So as you can see here, uh, the galaxy is there in the middle. Um, around the edges, there looks to be some um, stacking artifacts or stacking issues. You can see this um, kind of like the frames or the squares uh, are not aligned. Um, I'm not sure what was used to stack this, but maybe they could uh, take a look at the, their stacking process to try and improve this. So we're just going to keep um, this auto-developed um, stage keep this and return back to the workflow. Um, I'm going to rotate the image at this point. Just flip it 180 degrees. Um, again, there's no up in space as such. Um, however, let's just zoom out here so we can see what we're doing. Um, however, generally Andromeda has flipped the other way on a lot of processing um, and, and images. So 180 degrees, flip it around. I'm going to keep that and we'll continue working with it in this orientation. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, looks like there's some um, noise in here. So by using the bin function, um, we can trade off the uh, resolution of the image, which is 2720 at the minute. Um, we can reduce the image size, the image resolution. But on the flip size, flip side of that, the signal to noise ratio uh, improves. So it means we'll get more, more data coming through from the image initially. Um, however, we do lose a bit of, of the image size. So I'm just going to uh, reduce that down to about 45%, which is what I generally go for when I'm just running through star tools to see what we've got. Um, keep this and resolution smaller. However, we should have a little bit more signal um, within the image to work with going forwards. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is crop out the edges, crop out the stacking artifacts. Um, I'm just going to draw a square around this first to get us going. Um, and due to, I guess, cropping to take out these stacking artifacts, we can now see that Andromeda is obviously offset from the center um, of the image that will be processing. So generally, you know, with Andromeda, it's got a nice core that um, visually looks its best if it's in the center of the picture. Um, however, as I said, due to the, you can see on the right-hand side and on the edges here around the perimeter, the various stacking artifacts, which uh, uh, um, the green mask um, highlights even further here. So, I think that's, uh, let's just push that down a little bit just to see if we can get the core a little bit more central. Okay, and we will keep that. So we have lost quite a, a bit of the image um, here, but um, it's the best we can do due, due to the, the cropping 
sorry, due to the stacking artifacts. So the next thing, we've just got a, got a gradient on here. If we look at the top left, we've got a dark area. If we look to the center here, there's a, there's a bright area. Um, bottom right, there's a dark area. So a slight gradient going across. However, using the white module, we can reduce that. I'm just going to go with the, the standard defaults here for the vignetting uh, wipe. Um, Star Tools is doing its thing and flashes when it's complete with the mask and we can just kind of get a, a before and after. So there's the the um, the before here, we can see the dark left hand side here, moving across to bright um, or light and then moving across to a dark on the, the right hand side here. So a bit of banding and again left hand corner here we can see like a, a dark. So basically it's, it's, it's a dark to light to dark gradient going across the image. And then the after, which is when it's completed processing, there's still some dark gradient on the left hand side here, um, but in generally it's a bit more evened out across the across the image. Uh, so we'll keep that. So obviously with star tools, you know, we can do a lot of um, manipulating with the parameters at the bottom here. Um, but for this, I just wanted to give it a, a quick run through um, to see what we can get out of it. Okay, so the um, the wipe is complete. Now what we can do here is um, redevelop or re I guess stretch the image. Um, so just going to do that. Move the development parameter high here to give us a bit more uh, contrast through this. Um, and I'm pressing this home in button. Um, it just kind of like I guess you know, tries different settings um, or different variations. And it's just a case of eyeing it um, until something looks good. You know, that's a little bit too dark there as an example. Um, that's a little darker, oh, sorry, well, brighter, sorry. Um, but let's just try nudging that up a little bit, see. Okay, so that is too bright. Knocking it down 93, 94. So as I said, there's, there's no, there's no like, you know, specific formula to what we're doing here. Um, it is just, you know, sensing it with your eye or whether it's too bright or too dark. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll keep that. So the reason we do a second kind of like develop here is the first time around the auto dev just shows us what we've got, what we're starting with. And then working through the, the three functions, the, the binning, the cropping, and the wiping, we then redevelop it um, or restretch it, um, which which shows the stretch data um, after we've, we've um, uh, taken the gradients out as much as we can. Okay, so the HDR module, high dynamic range module, um, this allows us to use the reveal core settings which is what we've got here on, in Andromeda, a nice core in the center. Um, and when I show you the before and after, hopefully we'll see some improvement in the, the dust lanes or the, the, the dust lanes will become more prominent in the image. So there's the before, if we zoom in, we can kind of see what happens here. So zoom in, you know, the, the core's quite blended in with everything. Um, but after running the, the HDR module, we can kind of see there, it's it's a little bit more um, uh, around the dust lanes, around the core are there, and the core's been reduced in brightness, et cetera, in the middle as well. So there was before when we came into this module, and here is after running that module. Mm -hmm. Okay, just again, before the full image. So again, you know, a lot is smoothed out um, in one dust lane going into the other, whereas the after, we can kind of see a little bit more um, indication of the dust lanes, especially around the core. Um, so when we're working with the actual galaxy itself, um, you can get into various masks. So, um, you know, we'll try and preserve the core more. Um, whereas we're and working on the background or sometimes you do other functions where it's flip, you know, you, you want to work on the core and you don't want to touch the background as an example. Um, but as I said here, we're just doing a, a straight run through of the defaults that we'll get within Star Tools. Um, okay, so the next thing we're gonna jump onto is the color. Uh, but before we want move into color, um, we'll create a mask um, and I'll show you why in a second. So auto 
stars. It's going to do its thing. Okay, and then we've got uh, we've got a, a mask just on the stars. So the reason we do this is because you'll see when we go into the color module now, we click on sample. Okay, so just keep the mask. Don't want to change that. Um, the the mask is around the stars, and we we'll click on sample. And what this does is star tools to kind of takes a um, a sample of the white areas, which in this image is the stars. Um, and that helps it get its, its color balance across the entire image. So at the minute, all we've done is sample the stars. Um, it's then applied that sample across the stars, so across the mask. Um, so they are pretty standard and even. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we want to apply that color balance across the entire image, which will include the actual galaxy itself. Um, so to do that, we'll go back to mask. Uh, we clear the mask, so we, we remove it from just the stars, uh, and then we click invert, and that selects the entire picture or the entire image for us. Click on keep, and then while that happens, automatically uh, star tools has applied the sample or the, 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 the color instruction through the sample, but it's now applied it across the entire image itself. So again, we can use the before and after, so just uh, this is before we came in, so no, no color against it. And obviously Star Tools has processed the, the colors and, and this is what we end up with. So again, you know, when we use various parameters along the bottom or just uh, the saturation or the brightness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, sometimes you get the here and the image is a little bit too green. You can actually remove the green or re re reduce the, the green bias as an example out of here, um, but we'll, we'll just keep everything standard for the minute. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is um, there's a lot of stars in this image, um, which which is obviously good, but I feel that sometimes the stars detract from the actual uh, Andromeda galaxy itself. So we're going to um, kind of shrink or, or, or dull out some of the stars. So to do that, use the shrink module of the shrink functionality, uh, auto generate a mask, we're in the star module, therefore it knows to create a star mask. And this allows us to tighten, dim, um, or just kind of run a, a I guess a, a default or a standard reduction across all the stars. So this is the, um, again, default settings. This is before we came into this module and this is after. So you can see, you know, there's still some large prominent stars there, but the the smaller stars or the star fields being slightly removed and i think that draws the attention more to the galaxy itself as opposed to the stars so we're going to keep that and then the last thing we're going to do is remove um let's just clear the mask off okay so the next last thing we're going to do is do a final noise reduction run um, which is noise grain reduction within star tools. I'm just going to go for grain removal. And I'm just going to push this up a little bit until it goes a little bit unfocused. So again, this is kind of like a little bit of, you know, eyeing and just, you know, using star tools, what works, what doesn't work, as opposed to specific numbers that you need to pick or should be selecting. And now this is running um, the noise reduction on it. So let's see how well this worked. So the before, um, for zoom right in here, hopefully it comes through on, on the video. Um, a lot of kind of like, you know, let's just call it, you know, black pixels, um, pretty, pretty hard, pretty evident. And if we click on after, we can see that that's been smoothed out. So before and after. Um, and yes, we applied that, you know, to the entire image again through star tools, you can mask out the stars, you know, you could reduce the noise on just the stars, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, if your stars aren't round enough. Um, but zooming out, I think, if we do a, a before and an after. So we are going to see as I'm doing this is especially around the dust lanes and on the, the black background uh, itself. So before and then after. And we'll keep that. Okay, um, and then the final thing we'll do is just save this out. 
Um, but hopefully that's given a, a good run through of the data that was provided. Um, thank you for the upload into the Facebook group. Um, it's been quite interesting, as I said at the start, just trying and using somebody else's data for once. Um, and obviously it's a different uh, capture method, it's a different camera, it's a different setup, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so as I said, it's, 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 been, it's been interesting. Uh, so hopefully that that's, has been interesting for yourselves as well. Quick run through of star tools, pretty much default settings for everything. Um, but, you know, star tools I find is good because you can quickly do that compared to say Pixinsight or something like that. Um, and again, compared to maybe Photoshop or GIMP, you know, you're not having to try and up and down different curves or different uh, levels. Um, you can just go through the modules quite quickly in star tools, come out with a with a, a, a an overall feel of what it's going to go lo look like. And then obviously you can go through the process again, taking a bit more time, being a bit more specific with the parameters and options, etc.